Okay, so we've been looking at model selection and we've got various algorithms we can use and we've got cross validation so we can make sure we can, don't overfit. We've got various heuristics. There is no way we can do this automatically. Now, there's a couple of ways we can do that. I'm just going to show you one this time and it's what we call ridge regression. So let's assume that we've got our standard, standard linear regression. So we've got y equals b to 0 plus b to 1 xi 1 plus dot dot dot. And we've got normal stuff. What we can do is we sort of want the model that's going to fit the best, but we don't want it to be too big. So what we could do is we could do our usual find the values that give us our least squares, but we had a penalty term. And in this case, what we're doing is we're basically trying to get our coefficients of every coefficient except for the intercept as small as possible. What we have is this tuning parameter, as we call it, lambda. So we could change that. So basically, as lambda gets larger, you will basically go for smaller coefficients. When lambda goes towards zero, well, there's no constraint on this. And the idea is you can choose lambda to give you an optimal model to some extent by balancing between how good it fits and how many, in this case, how big your coefficients are. A couple of things. Let's think about what this complexity parameter does. Well, first of all, if lambda equals zero, there's no penalty for the model complexity. So you just got your ordinary squares because that first term was the residual sum of squares. What happens if lambda goes towards infinity? Well, basically, it forces all of your coefficients except for the intercept to be zero. And so you end up saying, well, actually, we just want a, the null model where we just have an intercept. So now your predictive value for your yi's just becomes the average of all your yi's. Simple as that. And the idea is that what it's doing is this parameter is sort of pushing everything towards the intercept. So we call it a shrinkage estimator. Um, what we do with the intercept term? Well, um, what you can do is, because it's not included in there, some people actually go and center the data before using it. So now instead of you having your y, it's your y minus the mean. Um, so, you know, you can actually center that, just take off the sample mean, and then you don't have an intercept. And in that case, the notation becomes a little bit cleaner because now you just got all your parameters together. And in fact, in this particular scenario, for given lambda, the solution is, well, it looks very similar. If you get rid of this term here, it's just x transpose x to the minus one, x transpose y, so it's your least squares, plus this just this extra thing here where i is just an identity matrix. Um, the thing you do have to be careful about is scaling. So in normal linear regression, if you change your units, for example, so, you know, in the FEV, we could have height was measured in centimeters, we could change it by meters, and everything gets adjusted. You find that you can see your coefficients automatically been adjusted. This doesn't happen with ridge regression. So often what people will do is they will scale to unit variance before they do it. So you don't get this influence of things with a lot of variability because of the units you're using. How do we choose lambda? Well, you can go back to cross validation. You can try different lambda values, try cross validation, find which one's the best. You can also have what we call this thing called effective degrees of freedom. And so what you do is you get your x transpose x for x you design matrix plus your whatever your lambda is times i. Take that to the minus one, do x x transpose, this will give you a matrix. You take the trace of that and that gives you your effective degrees of freedom. Where does this come from? Because we know that the in a linear regression, the degrees of freedom are given by this. Remember, this is the H matrix, the trace the H matrix gives us. So this is sort of the equivalent in the ridge regression space. So there we are. There's your first sort of advanced linear regression. That's an automatic model selector. You give it the lambda, and it goes and it works out which is the best values to do. So we've looked at lots of model selections now. What I'm going to do in the case study is we're going to take a, a standard data set and we're going to explore a lot of these things. So see you in the case study.